just spent the first part of the day doing our telepathy experiment, and I wanted to chat with you guys now because this week I heard that Cheryl successfully predicted the Pick 3 lottery twice last week. And you got, we've all been hanging out for a while and doing our remote viewing experiments and other kinds of experiments. And in this last year, we've all sort of been delving in different ways toward directly perceiving numbers or choosing numbers in different ways. And I, I just, when I saw that Cheryl won twice in one week, I thought that was really significant and that people would be curious about it. And then Cheryl told me that you guys, you very good, we're working together with Cheryl. You guys yep. have something going on. You've had some success too, like two out of three, many times. Yep. And then Kava, and you've been working on direct perception in your own way too, and you've had some success. I've seen some of the larger lotteries you're going after and you're getting like three or four numbers on a ticket. Yes. So it's amazing. And so I was, maybe we could start with Cheryl, just your experience last week. What, how did you, maybe start with the very first win you had last week where you got three out of three. Right. What did you do? <laughs> and then talk about the second one, or t talk about the process you're doing with Birgit. Um, well, Birgit and I uh, had the idea of, of setting up a spreadsheet and uh, that we would predict the pick three lottery, which runs twice a day. And uh, we would just sit in meditation and, and try to perceive the numbers. And we're keeping a spreadsheet. We've been doing this since beginning of February. It's, it's been a while. It's been six months. Yeah. And uh, we noticed some interesting trends that uh, sometimes we'll pick the same numbers as each other um, without the other one, you know, being aware of it. You know, we get on the spreadsheet independently and enter our own numbers. And uh, so I think that's really significant that we pick up on each other. And then we have runs of where we're predicting at least one number every single drawing. And then we started having two numbers. And like how many days in a row? Sometimes two, four, four and sometimes for both drawings. And uh, I did something interesting when um, I got all three numbers. Um, I have this process that I do where I try to key up my energy and, um, I don't know, just like bring in just a lot of gratitude and joy and happiness. And I was doing that that day. And um, it's, it's kind of a funny thing that I do. I just appreciate everything. Like I was cutting an onion and I just really appreciated this onion, even though it was burning my eyes. It's like, wow, I love this onion. It's so strong. And, and uh, just every moment of the day, I was just appreciating and loving. And then I started playing games of, of chance on my phone. And it was like, I couldn't lose, you know? Um, I was doing a ESP game by Russell Targ, and uh, I was getting, you know, like 14 out of 24, correct? That's like pretty awesome because there's four squares. So I don't know what the chances are of that, but I mean, 14 out of 24 guesses, I think is pretty significant. And then I started playing my poker game and I had so many winning hands, I started taking pictures of all the winning hands that I'd have. And uh, just being in this ecstatic state and having all of these wins. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll check my lottery ticket. And on my Powerball lottery ticket, I had three that were right, include, you know, including the Powerball. And uh, several numbers that were just like one digit off. And so I thought that was significant. And then I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I have to do my pick three now. And so I did the pick three and then I just forgot about it. And um, that next morning I had to leave at like 5.30 in the morning to go to my dad's to help him. And so I never checked it. And then Virga texts me later and she's like, oh my God, you're so psychic. <laughs> you got three of the numbers and then was it the next day or the day after that I got... You predicted 
the exact three numbers that w would that were then drawn the day later. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Seven Eleven. Right. On Tuesday, you put that in, but it was drawn on Wednesday. Wednesday. So the right numbers, wrong day. Right, right numbers, numbers, like, like in a row, yeah. in, like, in the right order. In, in the because right otherwise, order. I might not have even noticed, right? Uh, but it was so obvious. Huh. And then, so the one going back to the one where you you had the winning numbers on the right day. When you pick those numbers, I know in the days before that you were raising your energy mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mostly I was just trying to sit and just let the numbers come to me, kind of like we do in remote viewing, you know, getting subtle impressions. This this day is like, okay, you know, I'm playing this game where I raise my energy, and I, I've played this game many times, and it's, it's quite astounding the things that will happen during that day, and I can't always do it. It's, it's kind of hard for me to do to get that high level of energy going. So is it that you got the energy going high and then the numbers came to you? Yes. That's how you put? Yes. And do you like just sit down and wait for them to come or you like... Sometimes just, it's so fast they just pop in your mind. They just head. pop in your mind when, yep. you're, when you're like about to fill out the ticket, they come to you or... Yep. Okay. Yep. And then, and then other time. times I'll spend like a long time in meditation and really try to you know, just let it come naturally, and it, it takes forever. Um, I don't know. It, I don't have a definitive method, I guess, yet. But raising the, your energy, I, I do think that there is some significance, because I, I could tell you story after story of just bizarre, crazy things that happen that there's no way it's just chance. Well, I don't think it's chance, probably because you won a second time last week. You got the right three numbers. And the Powerball, too. And those Powerball numbers. When you got the second set of the pick three, was it the same process where they just came to you? Or the numbers yes. came to you while yes. you were filling out the ticket? Yes, it was very quick. And, and the Powerball numbers. And I wouldn't say that I was raising my energy for the Powerball numbers. I only checked them and that. Energy, so I don't know if there's a significance because it's, it's an event that's already passed. Yeah. But I don't know if time exists. Right. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, like, you won the pick three twice, and then you got how many numbers on the fireball? Three. Three. Out of six. Pretty yeah. good. Out of, out of six. So. And so it sounds like overall raising energy really high, mm -hmm. and then just being, they came to you as you were filling out the ticket. Yeah. And all the fact that you and Birgit have been teaming up and training for months this way, right? Yeah. Because you had, you haven't had a three out of three, but you've had plenty of two out of threes. She gets a lot of two out of threes, a lot. <laughs> um, some yes. I wanted to say also that I find, and sometimes I find that we don't maybe know what works. But when I observe her, or whichever she tells me, when we call each other out, when things went well, um, I find when you drive, and she goes into an altered state while driving. I do that, yes. <laughs> she is very successful also. So I think that is either, you know, as successful as raising your vibration, because that is kind of more of a newer thing. Right. Right. But the driving thing has been quite consistent for her as being successful. So yes, I've had... And I would say they just come to me spontaneously. I'm not even thinking about choosing when to drive. When I, when I drive, yeah. And things are in patterns, I find. There is... When we first started out, I felt I was doing better on the midday draws and Cheryl was doing really well on the evening draws and then eventually that all went away and switched. Or switched yeah. And so that's kind of, now. right now I couldn't even speak to that in a way. And, um, and I think for me the significant thing is that um, when I get to a good place, I tend to have one number right for six days in a row, or two numbers right for three or four days in a row. And, and we have the same, or very similar numbers with each other. 
Yep. And, and sometimes some of those numbers are right, and sometimes they're wrong. That you get the same numbers. They are sometimes wrong. Lots wrong. Wrong. Usually. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Where you can actually we'll get all three of each other's numbers. That's so. Or they're just one digit apart. Yep. So it's it's almost like like two fifty three and two fifty four, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So there's maybe you're not being precognitive of the winning numbers, but you're definitely having a telepathic connection to each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've had that from the beginning. Yep. We have, there's quite a few incidences in that spreadsheet where you can see that. Um, when they are that close, you know, we call each other out, obviously, because it's cute. Yeah. And, um, and it's nice to have that. I find also, though, that we have sometimes the intuition that um, certain numbers just appear, like whether it's a five, like we both have the five right. Mm -hmm. No other numbers, but we both got the five. Mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of times we both know that it's a double number, uh -huh. and, but we won't necessarily pick the correct double number. Uh -huh. we, have, we just realize it's... And the day that I picked the seven eleven. I thought it was close because it was a triple seven that day was the drawing. Yes. And I was like, oh, those two ones kind of seem like the sevens. I wonder if I was picking up on that. I don't know. But then the next day, seven eleven came up for that very same evening draw. Yeah. It was the evening draw. Right? Yes, it was the evening draw. So what is it like How when that feeling comes to you, like when you know a number is going to be drawn twice? Or you think it's going to be a seven or eleven? Like, is it a feeling, or is it just a knowing? What is? How do you experience that? What tells you that if the same number will be drawn twice? I think you have to ask Cobb on that because he knows more than I do. Um, do you have a sense, Birgit? Yeah. Like I, lately, I found that when double numbers come up, they stick around. So I don't have a system, right? I've played with different ways of perceiving in order to find the one that makes me successful and none of them have so far so but they are successful all in their own rights i find um from oh let's just pick three numbers like and i usually pick my numbers when i'm in bed late at night and it's a 30 second job right I'm like, um, 361, um, evening drawing for tomorrow, 878. You know, that's it. I'm not even putting any other effort in it. So just whatever spontaneously comes in your mind, you're like, that's it's, it. But it's not any more successful than when I dwell on it. I have right. not ever sat and meditated for hours. Right. Ever. I don't have the patience for that. Um, Lately, when I give it a little bit more effort, then I have noticed, and I'm, I'm visually trying to perceive that because I don't hear. Sometimes I just know. But um, when it is a double number or a, then it appears bigger and stays longer. Okay. And I'm like, why is nothing else coming up like a five? And I'm like, oh, maybe it's 5-5, five, five, or 5-9-5, five, five, or... And then I'm trying to just play around with it, and whatever feels good then, I'm going to go with it. So I try to see, but then I feel. Okay. And, but I didn't ever got three. <laughs> but you've got two I got three two a lot. Yeah. in a, a few days in a row, yeah. a few blocks, yes. So... So yeah, so then I have tried to see them like a telephone, like an old telephone. Then I used to try to see them like a rotary phone. Then I used to, then I decided to visualize the website and to see them up there as if they were drawn, on right, the lottery, on a lottery, lottery website. website. And I still do that. I try to envision them just scrolling by and stopping. I have no idea what is more successful. Cool. And so, Kevin, you probably got your own thing. And you go for the larger lotteries. You go for the Mega Millions and Powerball. Yeah. 
And I think on some tickets recently, you've had like three or four numbers. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about your process? And yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's very much unlike what they do uh, in my case. So uh, as you know, the first thing is I actually work for the, the, the larger lotteries. So the way it started uh, was that obviously we did a pick three in the beginning. Uh, of, I think it was towards the end of 2019, and you know that brought a lot of attention. To me. Like, okay, you know, you can do remote viewing of uh, lottery numbers. And then I was like, uh, the next few months were just uh, a process for me. And last year, where, like I've been doing this for almost a year, and then. Uh, so that's when, you know, um, in the beginning, it was all about, uh, you know, making my mind and myself believe that, yes, I can do this. So the aspect of belief was a major thing. Yeah, and and, and uh, for me to, you know, view the numbers correctly, right? Because, you know, if uh, you don't believe within yourself that you can do something like this, so that's a major thing. And I think, you know, that is where uh, there's a huge component of, uh, you know, for you to be able to believe that, you know, you can do this is the major uh, thing for me in the beginning. And then, you know, I developed different methods uh, of which, uh, of which there is a... So one of the very important uh, methods that I use is uh, my meditation technique. It's a specific breathing technique. Uh, it, it basically focuses on your, you know, your third eye region, and you know, it's just a way of you know bringing your attention to a specific uh, part of the body and uh, just focus on certain regions. And that's about. It. So when you ha when you're in this focused uh, attention space, and I combine that with uh, you know certain. Uh, uh, binaural beats at times or certain sound frequencies that I listen to so that you know, I just focus my attention there right and then uh, so it, it's more like you know uh, I'm trying to actively bring my attention to a specific uh, object or maybe the sound at times uh, because I don't tend to control it because at, at times you know if I'm very comfortable you know bringing your attention to the sound it's a sound or if it's an object that's the object and then slowly shifting the attention towards numbers. And uh, the way the numbers eventually come up is basically, you know, uh, so that's when, you know, I, I, there is something called a signal and noise. And I, you've also written uh, the book on this. So it's a pretty interesting experience. It's a, it's a pretty interesting concept there for me because uh, I think uh, one of the major issues in remote viewing, and you know, uh, and, and, and especially trying to view the numbers, is the difference about what is signal and what is noise when you're trying to view this. So one thing is, you know, you have to have a very strong belief system that you can see the numbers. So that's the major part. And once you go uh, above that, once you go uh, to the next level, the next stage is about, you know, trying to discern what is signal and what is noise. Right. So when it comes to signal, I think you know there are there's very less vocabulary in the in the remote viewing community uh, as to say okay when do you see you know as to what is signal right. So I think that's where you know uh, a major part of my working was to understand uh, and and to build the vocabulary about what is signal right. So I think uh, in in my experience what I've realized is that uh, thing like you know images or numbers which usually come up as a flash. Right, something which pops up very like quickly, or something which pops up as a flash, or something which probably surprises you when you're in your meditative state. Right, all those elements are signals. There. In the sense, they actually turn out to be the actual numbers in the lottery or anything in the future, like you know, precognitively, or might be from the past as well. So that was another major uh, you know milestone for me. Right, and then it was all about uh, uh, you know trying to you know, uh, balance the belief system and the signal and trying to discern the noise. So I think, you know, this is, you know, this has been my journey. And that's where, you know, uh, my focus was basically to, you know, uh, realize that uh, you can actually go for the big numbers and you can actually, you know, look for the numbers directly and you can actually remote view the numbers. And I have been able to prove this for myself uh, on, on, on so many levels, actually. So I have time series data to show that, uh, yes, there has been a significant uh, process. It is a size significant process. And I have been getting the results. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, I think, you know, the other component is there are many complex variables within the mind and, you know, the environment that you are in. So that also plays a huge role. 
So in this entire journey, it's uh, it's really been interesting to know that you know you can actually you know I, I've I've been able to convince myself that yes I can see the numbers mm -hmm. I can be cognitively see them and uh, if I can fine tune the vocabulary of what is signal and what is noise and you know eventually go towards that you know state and process um, you can actually you know get the numbers right. and that's when you know. I mean, this week in itself, you know, I played Lucky for Life, which is, uh, you know, we had numbers from 1 to 48 and 1 to 18. Uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, it's almost like, well, you know, getting all the numbers right is around uh, one in a roughly million probability, right? So I, I was able to, um, you know, consistently get around uh, three numbers, at least once a month, per se, in the last six months. But otherwise, uh, uh, I've also gotten uh, around four numbers, where the other two numbers of the total six set of numbers uh, were just, you know, just slight one-offs, numbers offs, or, you know. So close. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, swaps uh, of, of a few things. So things like that. Yeah. So, uh, but I've also tried the other, you know, bigger lotteries as well. And, you know, it's been a similar experience there as well. So, so I just want to go back to how you described your experience. So when they, when they flash, flash brightly, that's signal. That's signal. And those are the good numbers. When you talk about meditating on the third eye, because people use that term differently, are you talking about like the spot within the eyebrows or inside the brain? Uh, uh, it's in between the eyebrows. Between the eyebrows for you. Yeah. So you just focus here. Yeah, yeah. And then you set an intention. Yeah, I just set an intention and, you know, uh, I, I would realize that, you know, I would not get random thoughts when I would reach the, the viewing space and then it's a very focused intention and uh, I, I'd, I'd probably just be thinking about either one thing or one particular uh, object or anything or such and then slowly, slowly shift the uh, you know attention towards numbers and that's when you know it's like a focused one object or a one thing uh, attention and that's when you know, I start to see the numbers. That's, that's so what. it sounds like if someone wanted to try your method they're, they're meditating on their third eye they shouldn't try to perceive numbers until it's stabilized and concentrated, the mind. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when your mind is still... Then, when then, the mind is still, yeah. Then you can start trusting. Yeah. Yeah. So th that, that's a very reliable way to do it. But uh, other than that, you know, as uh, Brigitte and uh, uh, Cheryl. Yeah. Cheryl was uh, speaking, uh, the random uh, flashes uh, at times and at random situations, they also work out really, really well. It's just that you know you're, you're you know in that space yeah. most of the time, yeah. and then uh, you know randomly you 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 become a receiver for this signal, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah. But the car driving the car thing sounds interesting because a lot of people, it's a trance-like state. You get down into alpha brainwave often driving on the highway. Yep. That seems perfect for being receptive. Yep. I would say so, and I drive a lot. Do you find it annoying that your conscious mind is like constantly, it's like, what about these numbers? Yeah, I know. And, and then we're totally right, crazy. Yeah. Why exactly. That, that's where, you know, the, that's what I call that is noise. Yeah. Something which the right. mind makes up that right. is noise. So usually the mind wants to conserve the energy. It doesn't want to like, you know, uh, you know, get put you into that focus state. It just like randomly spurts out, okay, you see, you know, I just give you a number, okay, randomly, okay, this is one thing. But then that's not the actual uh, signal. The signals are usually, you know, something which surprises you, which I you see. haven't consciously thought of. And at least... So like when I'm driving and all of a sudden a number pops in number my head pops, and yeah. it's like, that why is, don't you try this number show? Exactly. And I'm not even thinking about... Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very interesting process there. From and I think that's where, you know, we'll have to, uh, at least that's where I am at least trying to focus at the moment. Trying to discern the signal, uh, and nice, and just uh, because I think you know, in my experience, I've realized that you know, all these information is just out there. It's it's in our unconscious space. It's it's just a way to you know connect or communicate with that space, being in the right state or frequency, as you may call it. So it's it's more the space. Yes. But there is also this phenomena of our, like we would both have a few days in a row where we yes. would yeah. just select or just uh, have one number five. five, right? And we're like, well, but there's no five in the winning numbers. And there will never be. There's I mean, we just saw it. It just goes away again and we go away from the five after a few days. But we both have it and we're like, what is that all about? It's just it's really intriguing that certain things, where we just maybe interfere with each other. 
and yeah. manage like all the effects. And I think we've had that happen with double numbers too. Mm -hmm. I find though we are surprisingly accurate picking out double numbers. I know. I think that is above average. So you're going to continue working on it? Oh yeah, I, I really enjoyed the experiment. Yes, uh-huh. And uh, I have the expectation, my intention is that I'm not going to meditate for <laughs> Yeah. It has to cut faster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It has to work faster. Yeah. And so... Well, don't you think that every person has a different methodology that's suited to them? Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be. And I haven't found mine yet. And which I thought was really fascinating. And that's a pain too. Like this guy, like this hell Great game. And it's but it sounds like... Every day, it's... And I don't know, I don't know, because we don't buy tickets. I mean, I don't. I don't. Yeah, and, really cool. um, you know, it will be a bummer when you do win and obviously you didn't invest into it. I have wondered about the uh, intent about not buying a ticket. Do you think buying a ticket would make things make your results worse or was better, better? You would, I would think you know because you invested energy and money into that outcome so either you so, think it would be better uh -huh. yeah because I, a, I think I would uh, maybe give it more effort picking the number <laughs> B I would um, you know, I just that energy exchange of hey, I put ten bucks in now, two thousand five hundred back. <laughs> and I don't know, something along those lines. Um, I I just think it's an important thing, and I'm wondering if that affects the outcome sometimes, or uh, we could maybe have more hits more often. Seems like yeah, we were having that conversation earlier. Like one of the but at the same time, I'm not ready to do it with the stats as they are right now. Yeah, the common you buy tickets when you yeah you're so close. I uh, I have to do is get a couple more and boom millions of dollars. Okay. Yeah. I guess uh, I don't know, but yeah, I think I uh, almost all the time uh, invest. Uh, Ask these cards out. Almost every day, I would say. Like, uh, so shocked. It's a uh, as as Bigger was saying, it's a it's a pro it's an energy exchange process, and there's more attention, and uh, there's uh, I I feel that there is a more focused attention, more seriousness to the experiment or the process that, uh, you know, which is involved. And, uh, and uh, I've also got, you know, better results. I'm not saying that, you know, I've made profits after total investments, but whenever I've, uh, you know, won, uh, I have uh, actually, you know, it has positively reinforced my belief system because, you know, this entire process was also majorly to add to my belief system, right? So I'm like consciously trying to work on my unconscious belief system for better. So it definitely adds to that. But the other thing that I've also observed is that, you know, once I have something like major, for example, if I have uh, one uh, four numbers and out of six and I've probably won like a, a few couple of hundred dollars or so, then what happens is like my mind is like, okay, let me rest. And I'm like, hey, you know, you can do this. And you know, you don't, uh, you know, pursue the process next day with the same uh, attention space, right? And that kind of like, you know, dilutes the result. It's, it's not like, you know, if I win today a day, tomorrow uh, will also be a, a big win, you know? But, but still, you know, I, I would still get a lot of close correspondence between the numbers, but it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna hit like big every day. Right, so, so you need the rest. Yeah, it's a good thing to rest. It seems like it's a good thing to rest, but I, uh, at the end of the day, I also believe that it's just, it's just something the mind, uh, you know, uh, comes up with. Uh, okay. It just wants to like relax and it's like, hey, you know, you won it. Why again? That's right. <laughs> you won big already. Like, you know, how much do you want? <laughs> so, so it's all about, you know, reinforcing that belief system very strongly and, you know, being very professional in, in that process is what I mean. You know, it's, it's a very interesting journey actually. So I've learned a lot in this process. So I encourage Cheryl after she got the three numbers right, to spend that money, even though she didn't invest in and got it, but to spend it in her mind or on a piece of paper, because I think that energy of spending it will just also influence her being and also the future of her numbers. 
so I hope she doesn't do it. I need to rewalk that thing too. I mean, you know, whatever the winning amount would be. Well, it kind of sounds like this isn't really about winning anyway. This, you, you describe a, a growth journey, like it's, yeah, it's about the experience. So the potential, the potential of, of the mind. And like what Kavan was saying, it's about working with your belief system. That, uh, you know, that your mind can do these things. That's a, that's a big part of it for me. Okay. Yeah, I really like that you said that because I think when I think about trying to go for a six digit lottery, I just don't believe it just because it's six digits. Yeah. Can I even remember six digits? Yeah. But that's, there I am putting an obstacle in front of myself. Yeah. And I could just stop believing that and be more positive. Yeah. So the thing is, the funny thing is that, you know, most of the times when I've actually got four out of the six digits, six two digits, it's not yeah, just single digits, it's, right. it's two digits, yeah. right? Yeah. So those have happened within 30 minutes of me, you know, getting into the meditation space and, you know, seeing the numbers pop up very strongly and, you know, discerning signal and noise and everything. So, yeah, uh, that, that's another very interesting thing to observe. Like, you know, we usually think that if it's like six digit and people say in the, like, you know, you need to RV for like, you know, probably like days together or maybe like, you know, an entire day of meditation. No, it's not that. You know, once you reach that space, uh, you just have to be a uh, proper channel to receive it. Do you mean the total meditation is 30 minutes or you're doing this 30 minutes before? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the, the total meditation is 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. Like, do, do you find that you're more successful if you do your process really close to when the numbers are drawn? Or can yeah. you do it like a whole day ahead of time? Oh, yeah. hey, I've, I've kind of like, you know, dabbled around with this and I feel that, you know, the closer you are to the draw, there is a better way of collapsing the information and there is, uh, you know, you get much better results. Like, you know, as what you see is what, is what comes up eventually. Than, you know, if you have like a whole, uh, like, you know, if you do it a uh, previous day or if there's like a 24 hour gap, that's not I mean, that's just my personal observation. <laughs> Most of the, you know, RV literature, you know, yeah. scientific proofs uh, also point to that. You know, Nasirika's research also said that if you close it, you know, the draws, and it's much better. But again, you know, I wasn't aware of that when I, when I did this. It was just like a pure, uh, you know, blind, unbiased uh, observation. Also have tiddled around with this, and but I tend to be more rushed when I do it closer because I only do that because I forgot the night before, and then it's like, dang, it's 1:30. The drawing is in five minutes. <laughs> I forgot today, and I don't find I get good results because I'm rushed. So, so stress is not. No, good. stress is not conducive. Well, I would say I've used stress in, in the right sense, like, you know, there's a positive pressure and still if you can balance and bring the calmness there. So I think that, you know, striking the right balance is very important in this entire process. And, I, and that's, you know, in my, as, as I told you, like, you know, in my entire journey, if I've learned something, it's, it's about, you know, learning to balance my mind in the right sense. You know, using the, like, pressure positively and at the same time, you know, staying calm. Uh, to be able to like balance these uh, states and then you know you, you you know essentially reach a very interesting state where you can you know, get these information I guess I did mine last night and I can't yeah. remember what they were that's the thing that is also I find very fascinating we pick the numbers and I think that's true for both of us we pick the numbers and we immediately forget them and then we type them in and there's have been many instances where we picked a very similar number than the day before. Okay? But we have no recollection of what we had done the day before, or the day before, or anything in the past, right? So, all these type of coincidences of why did I pick yesterday's winning numbers, or why did I pick my numbers from yesterday again? That's just weird. It's, I'm sure it has just to do with carryover and stuff, but we're so blanked out that we don't 
make that connection. Um, I think this is good. <laughs> so thanks so much for sharing your experience. I know a lot of people out there are working on this too. Directly preceding numbers. Maybe they'll appreciate her. Are you going through? And maybe when they went through the big ones. But I know even if you don't, like this is so valuable. Kevin and I were talking about um, winners like big lotteries. How there's a, such a similarity that they all say that they knew that they were going to win. His terminology does not reflect. Like one guy even winked at the part. camera so as he was buying his phrases and he was like, wow. <laughs> and he yeah. won like a lot of money. It was like $650 or something. Should we all wink at the cameras? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I know I'm going to win. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's very important to, you know, to hold that belief system because uh, that, you know, that will you know, positively you know, take you to a, a very winning state actually. Right. That and that's kind of what I'm talking about with that high vibrational state. You've got to be in that high vibrational winning state in order to, to perceive that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like you you're chasing it as they say. It's it's like you know you're you're in that state and you know you naturally attract you know and why yeah. I'm starting to hear more and more about the nature of reality that's making more and more sense to people. So 